Now to install Python, we're gonna go over to python.org and then click on the downloads here. And then we will click download Python 3.8.2. Now for the vast majority of you, this is going to be the easiest way to do it. And I recommend this as the way to install Python because it's coming from the source and you don't really have to know anything beyond just normal computer usage to download a program and then run and install it, which we'll do in just a moment. But for those of you who are familiar with a little bit more of an advanced topic, you can use something called Homebrew, which allows you to install all kinds of software packages on your Mac with just a simple terminal command. So you could absolutely install the latest version of Python using Homebrew. But the challenge that we face with both Homebrew and just clicking this yellow button on python.org is it just gives you the latest version. It doesn't necessarily give you multiple versions of Python. So to find multiple versions, you just come in here and you see that it says looking for a different Python with a different OS. You can just click on the operating system you're working in. In my case, of course, it's Mac OS. So I click on that and now I can see all of the different versions of Python. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to stick with the stable release. Pre-releases are cool if you wanna see cutting edge features, but also experience a lot of bugs. Stable releases are like, hey, stamp of approval, this thing's ready to be used in production. Go check that one out. Cool. So with that in mind, we wanna get whatever the latest version of the stable release is. And you know this by the highest number, right? So 3.8.2 is higher than 3.8.1, and therefore we want 3.8.2. Sorry if that's blatantly obvious, but I just wanted to make sure that you know that those are newer versions or incremented versions. Um, so that's pretty cool. So by the time you're watching this, you might see 3.8.4, and by all means, download that one. So once you download this, we're gonna go ahead and run this installer. And this is definitely the easiest way for the vast majority of people to install Python onto their system. So mine downloaded and installed right here. Um, and this is you know, a standard installer for programs on your computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run through and have all of the defaults come through. And then you know, use your password to let it install. And while that's installing, I'm gonna open up a program called Terminal because we are installing a new version of Python, but Macs actually ship with a version of Python. So to open up the Terminal application, I'm gonna hit Command Spacebar and then type out Terminal. So Command Spacebar is actually a way to do what's called a spotlight search. So if you're not familiar with this, it's a really nice way to get where you need to go. Um, so let's go ahead and open up Terminal. Now here I am in the terminal window. This is also called the command line. This is where instead of using a mouse and graphical applications, like, you know, this is a graphical application. I have a mouse and I can point and click and do all that stuff. Instead, it's all commands. I actually have to type stuff out for it to work. Um, and I don't need my mouse at all and all I need to be able to do is read the other commands. So you actually will get very familiar with using this if you start becoming um, a coder, which is my hope. So, um, I mean, I get this warning right here. The reason I'm getting this warning is because I have multiple users on this machine and I can just ignore this. I'm gonna go ahead and just say yes, why? You might not see that. In fact, you probably won't see that if you're working on your main machine. Um, and then something else you'll probably more likely see is a different looking terminal. Uh, yours might look like probably something more along the lines of this, which is completely okay. You, you can just go into your preferences and just change however you want it, um, which is pretty cool. So what we need to do here is actually verify that my Mac or your Mac has Python already installed. And if I just type out Python, it does, right? It's Python 2.7. This is actually installed on my machine. Notice it gives you a warning about it and Mac OS um, has this in by default. It's legacy software. It's not, it's not recommended that you use Python 2.7, but the point is that every once in a while you might make a mistake and actually just type out Python and think that you're working in a new version of Python when of course you are not. Luckily for us, there is this warning here, but uh, it is cool to know that Python is shipped with macOS. At some point, this might be Python 3 
as a default into macOS, which is another reason I'm telling you about this because it's possible that you didn't even need to install what we just did. Um, although it is still useful if you stick with us to see the different version stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the Python console. So these little hashes here, the greater than signs, the three of them um, denote Python. Um, that denotes that you are now in a Python environment. And this is true if you're on Windows or Linux as well. So whenever you see this, uh, that usually signifies that it's some sort of Python code. And we could say something like print hello world. Cool, that might have been your first ever Python statement. Good for you on doing that. Okay, so to exit out of that, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You could type out exit, or you could just close this terminal window and then it will actually exit out of that Python session. But I'm just gonna type exit and get back into the command line. So in my case, I know this is the command line because, well, I designed it to look this way. And of course, if you wanna get a little bit more familiar with the command line and how it works on Mac OS, just go check out cfe.sh courses coding with Mac OS. I go into a lot more detail on that there. Um, and that actually uses the bash shell versus the Z shell, which is what we're on right now, but they're pretty much identical anyway. Okay, for, for most beginners at least. So now that we have Python 3 installed, I just ran through it. What actually popped up was this right here. So this is some default things that Python 3.8 has that you can run and work with and all that. But really what you should be able to do now is type out Python 3-V and see that Python 3.8.2 is installed. That is the latest version. Now, if you're not seeing this, then perhaps you installed it incorrectly or perhaps you need to update your actual profile on the terminal window. So if you're having those issues, please let me know in the comments. I won't go into them here because I'm fairly confident that this is now working for you and it should be as it see fit. So um, that's installing Python 3.8. If you have questions here, just let me know. Uh, do note that I have other versions of Python on my system already. Um, so that's actually something that's gonna be pretty cool once we get there as well. So next we need to create those virtual environments.